Now we are going to move on to our second prepared speaker. He's a very new member to our club and he is enjoying beautiful, beautiful weather where he is. I'm very jealous of his location. I will leave that to him if he'd like to disclose that <laughs> to everyone. Like many of you in the audience today, he's also a writer. I am very fond of his book with the character Spoonie. <laughs> Feel free to chat with him later about that. But Mr. Jim Larson, is giving his debut speech with us, his icebreaker speech, as we call it here in Toastmasters. It will be a four to six minute speech where he will share his thoughts with us in his speech titled, Finding Humor in the Cracks. Jim Larson, Finding Humor in the Cracks. If you can find humor in the cracks, then yours is the world and all that is in it. And what is more, You'll be a man, my son, or daughter, or, well, you know who you are. What I'm really trying to say here is that you will be empowered. Rudyard Kipling said something very similar to that in his 1909 poem, If. But I like how I say it better. So if you're gonna quote one of us, I'd quote me. With that in mind, here, look at this picture. Look at it until it is seared into your brain and you can never unsee it. Look at it until it haunts your soul and causes you nightmares. Look at it until it drives you absolutely mad. Okay, that should be enough. Now, if you can find humor in a crack like that, then believe me, the earth is yours for the taking. And you didn't hear that from Rudyard Kipling. You heard that from me. I used to have to look at a crack like this every day of my life. A bunch of us did. This was back in 1988 to 1989 when I was a college freshman living on the 10th floor of a dormitory in Montana State University in Bozeman, Montana. There was a very, very large heavy set dude on our floor. And I mean, this dude was huge, very obese and he would walk around and he could not keep his pants up. I swear to God, his, his butt crack was constantly sticking out of the back of his pants for all the world to see. And it was omnipresent. Every time you turn around, there it was. Wherever you were, it was there too. Most often right in your face. The sight of that was not for the faint of heart. So many people could not take it. They, they dreaded the thought of that it would show up at a gathering in the common area or at a party in somebody's room and would just cause too, because it was a very sociable butt crack. It was very genial, easy going, and liked to be around people. I say it like the butt crack was some weird free floating entity living among us just wafting through the halls. But of course, I mean the person whose anatomy it was a part of. I'll call him Wade. Wade struck both fear and dread in the heart of so many of my dorm mates. The dread that he would ruin a get together was palpable. And that existed with just cause too, because he usually did. And this caused so much hostility and anger and just feelings of resentment from so many people of that 10th floor population. But me, I thought that was the funniest thing I ever saw in my life. I mean, think about it. How on earth can a person possibly go through their whole life so utterly clueless to not realize that their butt is sticking out of their pants, disgusting everybody. Is that even humanly possible to lack so much self-awareness? Apparently it is because there was Wade and his butt crack. As I pondered this, two things came to my mind. The first being, Somebody ought to write a story about this guy. The name of that story should be Butt Crack. The second thing that came to my mind was I should be the one to write that story. So I did. 
I wrote a screenplay called Butt Crack. A few years later, I had the opportunity to direct that film. It got picked up by Troma Entertainment, who is very famous for movies such as The Toxic Avenger and Class of Newcomb High. Butt Crack stars a somewhat famous rock and roll singer named Mojo Nixon in a role of Preacher Man Bob. And would this have happened had I not seen the humor in that crack? If I were so uptight like the rest of my dorm mates, would this film ever have happened? No, it wouldn't have. So I ask you, what cracks are, are in your face? What, what cracks do you see? Can you see the humor in them? If you can, then yours is the earth and all that is in it. And you can quote me on that. Wow, thank you, Jim. That was a very, very unique icebreaker speech. <laughs> definitely one of a kind. Thank you. Yes, you, I definitely have that image seared in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> Our next evaluator is Dr. Mansour Hasib, who will be evaluating Jim Larson's icebreaker speech. Jim Larson. As a very seasoned author and a speaker, I expected a great speech, but you even exceeded that. I love the way you developed your story. Your storytelling style is just amazing also enjoyed the props that you brought in. I loved the humor. And here's the greatest part. I loved that you took the risk of showing that picture of the butt crack, which would actually set up the audience. Half of the audience or more would feel offended. What are, what is he showing me? But I think that was part of the strength of this, because after setting up the audience with that negative thought, you gave the audience a huge lesson at the end. You made us feel embarrassed about even thinking that that was a bad thing, because then you broadened it to say, how many times in our lives do we think of something as so offensive that we don't even find the humor or the lesson or something more deeper into it? And that's what I loved about this whole speech that you set us up, you set me up for sure. And then you closed with that bang. Of course, every speech can be improved. And what I would recommend with this speech is, you can expand this to a seven minute version perhaps, and then work more on the presence and the pauses because there are so many humorous elements in the story, you will need to give us time to laugh and soak in that. So slow down the delivery here and there also try to add more vocal variety so that more of your facial expressions, hands, all this, because see, I, I wasn't noticing too many of the facial expressions because when you were talking about, and there was Wade and things like that. So you could use your face, eyes, voice to bring variety into that speech. And I would say presence also, perhaps. I know that the online medium is kind of limiting, but you could try to do this standing, moving around a little bit, and maybe getting a little bit better video camera and all that, because the picture was a little, little fuzzy. It wasn't as sharp as it could be. And that would enhance a lot of your message. But overall, as a first speech in this club, it was absolutely outstanding. And I only expect amazing things from you. 
this was a great speech. Thank you for doing it. Thank you.